I just, I just did a video that's called The Settlement Ninja. And it's addressing women who go through their life trying to trick men into their money, out of their money, trying to, they, you are women that basically you spend your life just getting settlements out of wealthy men or anyone that you consider to be of some financial advantage to you. And so you go through your life making things up, saying that they did things that they did not. Finding out what their secrets are. Learn about their family so you can threaten them and you can blackmail them. And you can do whatever you need to do. Some of you go as far as you're going to have their children. You may have a little colony of children. And they may be the same person or most likely different people. But you have those children so that you can get money. I want to be very clear. As I was in the last video, I'm not speaking about women who you have been legitimately um, harassed violated in some way and you are speaking out i am not speaking to you this video has nothing to do with you i'm speaking about a demographic of women who is deliberate and they're vindictive and they're manipulating and they look for men to get a settlement I am not speaking of women who through your choices somewhere down the line, you you ended up having children with several different men or one person and he's not in your life. I am not knocking you. Everyone has their journey and things that they have done. But I'm talking about and talking to a specific group of women that you are very strategic in who you're going to have a baby for. Because your whole thing is, I want that money. I want to be taken care of for the rest of my life. Even if he's not in my life, I'm going to have his baby. I'm going to use his baby to get to him. And I want you to understand that you're playing a very dangerous game. First and foremost, there are women who have doing, been doing this for many years. They live for settlements. They file lawsuits and, and do all these things. And they're telling lies. And what they do is they play this game. You know, the Bible talks about Joseph. Joseph was dil diligent and he was, a, he, he was, he was well-versed. He was absolutely educated. And he was brought into Potiphar's house to serve him. And he began to get elevated to different positions. He was doing so well. But Potiphar had a wife who lusted after David. And she was very aggressive. She wanted him to sleep. She wanted to sleep with him. And he told her, no, he will resist her. She'll try and try and try and he will resist her. And when she tried again, he completely broke free from her. He ran from her to the point that he ended up leaving his, his shirt or whatever in her hands because she was clawing at him, trying to get him to sleep with her. And he was adamant he was not going to do it to the point he ran up out of his shirt. And so in an act of probably she felt ashamed, she probably felt rejected, dejected, and angry, she decided that she was going to lie and say that he attempted to rape her because she had the his shirt in, it, in her hand. So she told her husband that and Joseph ended up being put placed into prison. And I believe with everything that Potiphar probably knew his wife and the type of woman she was because I'm surprised he was not executed. He was not an Egyptian. You know, he was an Israelite, but yet his life was saved. And the point that I'm trying to show you is this type of woman, if you are, you are very aggressive and forthright. You set your sights on who you want and you're going to go after them. You may not be grabbing them and saying things like that, like the example that I just gave you, Potiphar's wife with, with Joseph, but you have a tenacious approach. Even if you wrap it in coyness and shyness, you are tenacious. And then what you do is, in this case, if they succumb to you or if they at least give you, whether they have slept with you or maybe all they settle on doing is just talking dirty to you, you send dirty pics to them, whatever it may be, if you just get something, 
you are going and especially if they have slept with you you run and you falsely accuse this man now i don't know where this comes from some of you you've had um the males in your life were wicked and evil and so you are so hurt that you are on this vendetta thinking you're going to get back at all men but i want you to understand that you're not getting back at nobody but yourself because when this life is over, you are a soul that's been tricking and using people all these years. And you're going to pay for it. You can't say these men are, you, you, you can't sanctify that type of behavior by saying, well, I'm just doing this to men who are dogs. I'm just saying this to men who are no good. That's not your place. God did not send you to be the sexual angel, you know, trying to vindicate. You're not no Robin Hood. You're not Robin Hood. You're simply Robin. God is not sending you around to, to wrong the right. You can't be a, a, a vigilante in this way. It's time to deal with your hurt. It's time to deal with the, the core cause of what's caused you to go down this road. Because you have to understand that what the enemy, because Satan is real, is using you like he used Eve in the beginning. To convince her of something, convince her that what she already had was not good enough and look at what you don't have. There's something God is not telling you. And, so, and she was already in paradise, but he was able to change her mind and make her see herself a certain way that she's missing out on something. So she traded what was already precious for a moment and she was able to turn around and then convince her husband. She was able to convince, convince Adam. And the end result of that was they both got kicked out. And so what you're actually being done, being used to do right now is the same thing. You've been convinced of something about yourself and you have glamorized it, covered up the hurt, the pain, the rejection, the anger and glamorized it and said, I'm, I'm strong and I'm going to do this. And you make it seem as if it's sport and you enjoy it, but you don't. The reason why you become so indifferent is because there's a hardness and a coldness that's there that's still causing you to do this stuff. And so you think it's fun, but I want you to know that you are you you are under like spiritual anesthesia. You're not feeling and you're not seeing the direction that you're going in. And so you're used to be have a convincing argument and present the fruit of your seduction to these men to get what you want. And then they fall for it. Some of you, you could probably so disgusted even the act of sleeping with them or talking to them. You have a resentment. Some of you have a resentment. And so when you're filing your lawsuits and you're, you're making up your false allegations against them, there is a venom and a bitterness that's there because you are whoever hurt you and whoever violated you and whatever man disappointed you, you just see every man as this way. And sometimes you feel justified because he may be married and you feel like you're doing his wife a favor, but you're not. Because let's face it, you're not really about her. You're about you. And so you become what I call the settlement ninjas. You're real good and skilled at this in getting money out of men one way or another through false allegations through uh, ruining their reputation in their lives or having their children so you can keep them in your life. Well, keep their money in your life. And so you use your children, but God is going to hold you accountable. You may scoff and laugh at this, but I want you to understand in Revelation chapter 3 that speaks about the Jezebel spirit. You know, we're not talking about Jezebel, the one that was so rebellious. We're talking about this other thing, a spirit. That uses you to be seductive and beguiling. But at the end of it all, she will be cast into a place of eternal punishment. You have to remember that everything that you're doing and you're, you're, all the money in the bank, all that's going to be left, be left behind. And you're going to stand before God in eternity as a living soul. You may not believe it, but you need to understand and look at the world around you and realize that uh, we are suspended in space and we are spinning over a thousand miles per hour and you're not getting dizzy. But yet if we spin in our living room, we're going to get dizzy. You don't feel the speed of the, at, at which we're using. The sun is about 93 million miles away and yet the rays get to our planet in 
in, a, in, in eight minutes every time. There is a God. And he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he sees everything that you're doing. He knows everything that you're doing. You've been warned, you've been told, you probably had some close calls. He has saved you for some things, but eventually, if you don't stop, you're going to meet that person. You're going to meet this one person that's going to be different from all the other men that you've ever played with. Because what you have to understand is there's a momentum that you will take up and keep doing that's it's only you're only getting away with things to set you up for this person that will kill you, destroy you. And you don't want to meet that man, this type of individual that is so, he, this person will be so heartless and lack some such empathy that they would want you to suffer. They don't want you to die quick. They will make you suffer. You don't want to eventually run into this woman who for the sake of her family and husband loses it. There is always an ultimate setup in the end. And you may live your life all these years. You may know somebody that they lived their life doing just that. And it seemed like they died and, and they had this great life. But you must understand that there is the beginning of eternity that you are not, not aware of. And if that person did not have themselves right with God, and if that person had not repented, I'm telling you, they're not having a good time right now. You may not believe, but look at where we are planet-wise. God exists. And I believe the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Why? Because the, at this name, this is the only name and this is the, the only belief at which the world has a problem and will persecute you for it. You can believe in anything else. You can worship a, a you can worship a goat, you can worship a roach, you can worship a tree, you can do anything but to believe in Jesus, to believe in the Son of God, to believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, that is a problem. You, you, people are going to jail, people are going to prison, people get offended, all this stuff. And there's got to be something there. Not to mention my own personal testimony and experiencing experience of the transforming power of God but I just need to warn somebody I need to warn a young lady out there rediscover who you are you're being used to destroy people and eventually the devil will destroy you you can't do evil and don't expect that you're not going to reap it if I plant an apple seed, just one seed in the ground, it's going to bring up an apple tree in time. An apple tree don't grow overnight, but eventually it's going to grow. And when it grows, it's not going to give me one apple because I planted one seed. I'm going to get a lot of apples. And not only will I get an, an, a lot of apples, but I'm going to get, it's going to spring up through different seasons, season after season. So season after season after season, they'll spring forth again and again and again. And I want you to understand that this life that you're living and what you're doing is going to lead to destruction. It's going to lead to, to destruction. And I want to tell you, if you leave this world and your soul is in that same condition, where you end up, you would rather meet somebody who is doing, you'd rather meet the worst killer on this earth than to go into eternal damnation. Learn your identity. You have been fooled. Your hurt, your pain, your rejection, your bitterness has taken a hold of you and has sent you on this path. You may be angry at God and saying, well, God, you allow me to experience these things. You may be bitter at God. You may not even want to hear the word of God, but you have to understand Jesus came here on this earth and he was sent to be crucified. That does not seem very fair, but he had a purpose. Learn to understand your purpose. It does not mean your pain was valid and, and, and oh, just deal with it. But if you spend your whole life being bitter at God and thinking you're hurting God, you're not. You're hurting yourself. I'm sure he is saddened by some of the things that you're doing. But at the end, 
to here depart from me at the end to find yourself instead of ascending and experiencing peace you're experiencing horror you don't want to go to sleep and wake up thinking you're getting up and you see yourself still on that bed you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're being pulled down through the earth because everything in you is going to let you know what's happening. You're just going to know. You know, when we're in the form of a soul, you're going to know everything. You're going to have so many answers as to why this is happening. And I want you to understand that God wants to give you your answers right now. He wants to give you your answers so you can stop doing what you're doing. So you can turn away and you can help others. Stop being a settlement ninja. Stop trying to earn money through deception. Stop thinking you're getting back at God. You're only hurting yourself because God is still sovereign. God is still holy. And yet and still, you're waking up every day because he loves you. That's how you woke up today. Because he loves you and he wants to give you an opportunity to get it right. And you know, they have a song that says, I don't even know all of it, but it goes, just as I am without one plea. I don't know the rest. Something. I come to the Lamb of God. I come. I come. See? He will take you just as you are. Just as I am. Without one plea. La la da da. Was shed for me. La da da. La da. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help whoever is listening to me to understand her purpose. I pray right now that her eyes will be open and she will no longer see herself, Father, the way that she has. I pray, oh God, that you'll pull back all the layers of the hurt and the pain, the bitterness, the anger, the rejection, the violations. And I pray, God, that you will reach deep in within the very core of her heart and begin to show her who she is in you. I pray you will hold her. I pray that she she can cry before you. I pray that she realizes, oh God, you were there every step of the way with her. And God, if she will only open up her arms, her arms and heart to you, Father, you will be the father she'll never had. You'll be she's never had. You'll be the mother she's never had. You'll be the friend she's never had. You'll be the protector and the provider, oh God. And God, she no longer needs to go around destroying God. Let her realize that everything that she's doing, Father, it's not a natural thing. Not only is it natural, but it is a spiritual thing. It has a ramification and it stays and it perpetuates and it solidifies and vindicates vindicates not vindicates lord but it gives the enemy an argument to put her into a place that at present time is ready for her but god you have raised her up and you have woken her up you will cause her to wake up every day because you love her you cause her to wake up every day and hope she will hear you oh god because you don't want her to go to this place I pray, oh God, that she will be protected and kept, oh God, as long as she hears you. I pray she continue to get your grace and mercy, and I pray that she will turn her life around. These women will turn their lives around to you, oh God, so that she will not come into the path of destruction, that, Father, she will not come along to the path of the pestilence and the terror that walks by night. Father, I thank you that there will be full repentance of sins, turning around to you, transformation, reformation, reparation, and transformation, reformation, God, and Father, there will be healing. These things I pray and I ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. 
All right, guys, that's all I have. Ladies, you've been fooled. You've been duped. And now your eyes have been opened. It's up to you whether or not you're going to open up your heart to the Lord and let him change your path. All right, guys.